Welcome. Good morning. Belgrade Online. An online ministry of Belgrade Avenue United Methodist Church. Two thousand years ago, the world saw the original Palm Sunday. On that Palm Sunday, the Lord of heaven and earth entered Jerusalem on a baby donkey. He didn't come to us with power and magnificence, but with meekness and gentleness. On that Palm Sunday, those who sang Hosanna would five days later shout, Crucify Him. On that Palm Sunday, Jesus turned His face toward Jerusalem where he would endure the most painful and humiliating kind of death, the kind of death that would save the world. Palm Sunday is a reminder of who Jesus is and who we should be as we follow him. Palm Sunday reminds us that the way of Jesus is the way of the donkey, the way of humility, the way of gentleness. Palm Sunday reminds us that it's totally possible to be with Jesus on Sunday, but forsake him on Friday. And Palm Sunday reminds us that Friday is coming. Word had spread about the raising of Lazarus and the other miracles of Jesus that he had done. So the arrival of Jesus was big news. People probably didn't expect Jesus to make a big show of entering the city. But unlike earthly kings and mighty warriors, Jesus enters Jerusalem riding on a humble donkey. The people were looking for a savior, for the Messiah. So when Jesus approached the city, they raced out to greet him like a king. A view from the crowd. For the people welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem. It must have been an exciting day. They believed that they were seeing the Messiah, the long-promised Savior, who would come to restore God's people to wholeness and power. Jesus was a rising star. And even though they didn't have a red carpet back then for celebrities, the welcome Jesus gets is pretty amazing. He raised Lazarus from the dead! Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? He's a prophet. A great prophet. A prophet? On a donkey? Listen to the healing of the sick! You have come to deliver us! Isaiah said, Jerusalem, daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh unto thee, humble and meek. Honor to the Lord, son of David! 
Do you are the hope of Israel. You are our prophet and our savior. As we saw the priest looking down upon the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, I can only wonder if he thought, so what does this mean? What is to come? What is going to come upon the city of Jerusalem? We're going to view next a video by Randy Frazee, who has written... God's story. It's a synopsis of the Bible. It's written by he and Max Lucado. Instead of all of the books uh, that we have in the Bible, and this does not take the place of the Bible, but instead of all of the books of the Bible, the entire Bible, God's story, is summarized in 31 chapters. I invite you to um, look at that book to use it um, as part of your devotion. I know we have several copies in the church. If you would like a copy, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to share, one with, share one with you. But today's message comes from session 25 or chapter 25. Jesus, the Son of God. When I was a boy, there was a popular show on television yes, in black and white, called What's My Line? Contestants with unusual occupations were interviewed by the panelist. Only questions that could be answered with a yes or no were allowed. At the conclusion of the questioning, the panelists attempted to guess the contestant's occupation. Now, there were also mystery guests, usually a famous person like Alfred Hitchcock or Groucho Marx. The panelists had to wear masks and the guest usually disguised his or her voice. This chapter of the story could be entitled, What's My Line? Jesus is the guest with the unusual occupation. The panelists are the disciples, the religious leaders, and the people from Galilee to Jerusalem. You see, it's one thing to be mesmerized by all the teachings of Jesus, but his primary occupation is not a teacher. It's one thing to be captured by all the healings he performed, but his primary occupation is not a physician. You can even be inspired on how he lived his life and loved people, but his primary occupation is not all time good guy. All of these things added to the evidence of his true occupation. So what's Jesus's line? We begin with the disciples. Jesus says to them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Now, Peter answered correctly, but he wasn't dialed in on the exact job description for the Messiah. So Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priest, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Now, Peter didn't like the idea, and he decides to rebuke Jesus. And Jesus responds, get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. He told Peter he was thinking completely from the lower story and missing the upper story plan. Next, Jesus goes to Jerusalem. The religious leaders and the common citizens are now the panelists. Jesus goes during a popular holiday for the Jewish people called the Feast of Tabernacles, which meant the city was packed with people. People began to guess Jesus' occupation. 
Some said, he's a good man. Others said, no, he deceives people. About halfway through the festival, Jesus gets up and starts to teach. They ask the question, how did this man get such learnings without having been taught? Good question that demands an answer. After hearing his teaching, some of the panelists guessed, surely this man is the prophet. Others said, he's the Messiah. Still others ask, how can the Messiah come from Galilee? Does not scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Ding. This person was right. Check the facts. Jesus is from the lineage of David and he was born in Bethlehem. Jesus then started dropping clues. He said, I am the light of the world. Only God himself is the source of light. Huh? Later he said, I am from above. You are of this world. We might say, I am from the upper story. You're from the lower story. Only God claims residence in heaven. Someone asked sarcastically, are you greater than our father Abraham? Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. This was the day Abraham dreamed of when God said that from his nation, all people would be blessed. Jesus is that blessing. Then Jesus laid down the whopper. Very truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus is not only saying that he was around before Abraham, but he claimed himself as the I am. Remember back in the Old Testament when Moses was going to Egypt to let the people go? Moses asked God, who should I say sent me? God said, tell them I am sent you. This is the name for God, Yahweh, Jehovah. People were ready to stone Jesus. Now fast forward to the Passover feast. This is the granddaddy of all Jewish feasts. This celebration commemorated the day that the angel of the Lord passed over the homes of the Hebrew families with boys because the blood of the lamb was washed over the doorpost of their homes. Jesus shows up in Jerusalem right before this feast begins. Surely the panelists are getting warmer. Before he enters Jerusalem, he sends his disciples into the town to fetch a donkey. Now, they don't know why, but they do it. Jesus gets on the donkey and rides into Jerusalem. Now, what's he trying to say? What's the clue that he's giving? The prophet Zechariah of the Old Testament told us that the Messiah would come and do just this. Listen to his words. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The people must have understood this because they began to lay palm branches in front of him to make a path into Jerusalem. Some were simply waving their branches. And as they did, they shouted, just like Zechariah suggested they should. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This song was overtly suggesting that he is the Messiah. Remember that the Hebrew phrase Messiah was used of the kings of Israel and meant anointed one. Jesus's occupation was to sit on the throne of David. Hosanna in Hebrew means to save. Still people in the crowd ask, who is this? The answer of many, oh, he is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Many of the people got his title, the Messiah. Many people were still clueless, but none guessed his true occupation. None knew what this Messiah was called to do. They most likely thought that the Messiah would come to become their king and restore them to political greatness over Rome, a mere lower story accomplishment. But God had a grander plan for Jesus, a higher upper story assignment. The one group he spoke plainly to was his disciples. He told them, 
They will condemn me to death and will hand me over to the Gentiles who will mock me and spit on me and kill me. Three days later, I will rise. He told them plainly, but I don't think it truly sank into their soul. What is Jesus' line? You are now the panels. What do you think? We now know God's full plan. He sent his son who sat by his side in the upper story to come down to the lower story to represent us. Everything in the life and the stories of Israel pointed to his coming. God's plan is for him to die. He is going to pay for our sins so we can be made right with God and come back into a personal relationship with him like Adam and Eve had before the fall. He is the lamb without blemish that died a million times in all of those sacrifices in Israel. He is God. He is the lamb of God offered up for our sins. That's Jesus's line. And it's all going to come down in the next chapter. I would like for you this week, this holy week, to consider some things to ponder from this day. Those things are, is it really Jesus and everything about him? Or is it that we only want the portion of Jesus that fits comfortably in our present life situation? How much of Jesus do we really want? And how far are we willing to follow him? Will we celebrate him today and scatter when he asks for us hard things that our eyes cannot see and our finite minds cannot comprehend? enjoyed this week's episode of Belgrade Online. If it was life-giving and encouraging to you, please let us know by visiting our giving page at baumc.org give. 
Thanks again for watching and have a blessed week.